Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragalia Weekly. In this week's episode, I'm going to be talking about the Skyborn Spectacle rerun, Windswept Warriors, our new banner, as well as showing off some unseen summoning footage I did on the Valentine's Showcase. We're going to have all of that and more, but of course a version update did come out this week in Dragalia Lost. If you're looking for my thoughts on the Affliction change and the update as a whole, I pretty much covered that in last week's video, so feel free to give that a look if you want my thoughts on Valentine's Azalith and some of the other big winners from that change. The other thing that has changed that's pretty noticeable is, by default, there's now a combat log when you're actually battling in Dragalia Lost. You can go into the settings menu to turn it off, and personally, that's what I have done for most quests. But you will notice that in this week's footage, just because I wanted to give it a chance. The other change that happened that I've really been liking is now you can auto certain co-op quests. And I find that combat log is actually really helpful when you are doing auto battle. It's kind of fun to be able to just watch and read along what's happening. And in that context, the log isn't too distracting. In any case, the battle I'm going to show off first is Nightmare on the Skyborn Spectacle raid against Valfair. This was my deathless run, and it took a while to put together because I was clearing Nightmare using Yudin and my team, of course, for that player EXP, and unfortunately, I made some mistakes and didn't switch to him appropriately, as I should have, in order to protect him and make sure he survived. So it took me a couple tries, and finally I decided I'm just going to go ahead and throw in Maribel and make sure I can get my death list. But while that plays, let's talk about the Windswept Warrior Summon Showcase, because there's really not a whole lot I want to say on Skyborn Spectacle. It's an okay rerun, Su Fang is an okay unit, Valfair, kind of one of these early raid bosses that couldn't get afflicted really, so you can't actually poison Valfair, so not the best context to show off the affliction changes. I'm using Pazuzu simply because that's my best strength dragon, so that's why I've got Pazuzu equipped. But yeah, I pretty much am planning on doing the bare minimum with this raid, gonna auto everything I possibly can, I skipped the story since I already read the story once earlier in the year, and that's kind of just how I feel about it. This isn't the most exciting one for me, but the banner is far more exciting. Windswept Warriors has Victor, Vayu, who's a skill damage wind dragon that looks kind of like a raptor, and in Hindu mythology is like the brother of Agni, which is pretty cool. And then we also have Noel. And Noel is definitely the highlight on the showcase, in my opinion. With her being a 4-star, she should be easier to pick up than the other two. And Noel is a 4-star Wind Wan who has a primary skill that's a buff that's really, really good. So her first skill buffs the strength of all Wind Adventurers on your team by 25%, which, for reference, Elisan, who's basically the best buff bot in the game, only has a 20% 15 second buff. And both of these units also have 25% buff time as their first ability. So both of them are actually buffing for a longer duration, which is awesome. And Noelle also has the skill damage co-ability since she's a wand. Her second skill deals damage, but it is on the weaker side. And her final ability, unlockable if you promote her, is actually prime defense which you can pair with a lead unit who has a strength double buff ability to actually take advantage of that and translate it into pretty good DPS. So all in all, Noelle is absolutely fantastic. She even gives Gala Cleo a run for her money in wind content specifically or facing water enemies. So she is great if you've been struggling with the water MG. Besides giving Gala Cleo some competition, at least in that elemental domain, Noelle also can give competition to Ellie as a helper for the first time, really, when it comes to the Mercurial Gauntlet, basically because she does have a bigger buff, it's just limited to wind-only adventurers. So I don't think that restriction is too big of a drawback, and I've already seen a lot of people set her as a helper, which I think is absolutely awesome and should help others clear the water gauntlet. Victor is also great basically because his first skill inflicts bleed, 
and there's no hoops to jump through. Unlike with Addis, you don't have to use the second skill first before the first skill can inflict a lead, so he's honestly just a really straightforward and really good unit. He has some defensive capabilities that don't even matter too much. He has a way to buff water resistance, and he can increase the duration of that with a buff time passive. He can also reduce knockback, which I've heard good things about, but I can't think of a really good application of just yet for the time being. But in any case, just inflicting bleed, having a strength passive, he is really fantastic. That being said, I think that Addis is way, way worse under AI control because Victor can just fire and forget with his S1, his S2, and he's going to be inflicting bleed. Addis under AI control doesn't really work out well at all because he sometimes casts his skills in order, so he'll cast his S1 before casting his second skill, which buffs his first skill and is what makes it cause bleed in the first place. So that is one area where I think Victor does really outshine Addis. And finally, Vayu, another one of these skill damage dragons, basically going to be best in slot for a lot of wind adventurers. Anyone who has a strong damage dealing first skill, it will likely be the best dragon for them. Although Pazuzu is still quite good if the adventurer can inflict poison or if you have a poison bot in your team, then Pazuzu is not bad either. But I think Vayu really puts a nail in the coffin of Zephyr in some ways. Zephyr is not bad, 60% strength dragons are never going to be bad, but these skill damage dragons are really awesome. So I'm pretty happy with the showcase. I think it's a good bait, so to speak, since I know a lot of people do want to wait for the anniversary. Outside the scope of just the banner, there's also a pretty cool new worm print with beautiful artwork in the worm print shop, featuring Alex and Elisan as kids and then as adults. And it's our skill damage worm print for daggers. So this can give 40% skill damage to daggers with 15% flurry strength, which is a really good combination and actually kind of helps to bring daggers up to par with other types of units. The only unfortunate thing about this is that under AI control, daggers will not always maintain combo counts. So that flurry may or may not work depending on the unit, depending on their rotations, and so on. So I'm not 100% confident and how good that's going to be. If you're leading with a dagger unit and something or taking a dagger to the high dragon trials though, it's absolutely awesome. It's great that you get both of those effects in one worm print, which means you can use your second slot for something like Levin's Champion or the Prince of Dragon Yule that boosts critical rate and critical damage. So that is a really nice pickup. It's called Twinfold Bonds and I'm glad to see daggers get a little bit of love. But now let's go ahead and switch over from the showcase, from the Skyborn Spectacle rerun, to some summoning I did after my Shinobi Pulse video. So the last thing I'll say about the showcase before we get into the summoning is basically just that the showcase also has Rock, Linyu, and Pia on raid up. Rock and Linyu are two other really good DPS pulls that you can get from that. And Pia is not bad for things like Astral Raids, she's a genuine tank. As you can see though, as far as this summoning goes, I for some reason just had that feeling of, I should keep going, I really want to see if I can get Valentine's Hildegard. And I decided to go ahead and dip into my Diamantium to do so. So this was a very sketchy late night decision on my part. I never really want to encourage just pulling with Diamantium. I think it's something you can save for higher uses like daily deals, save for Platinums and Dream Summons, or even for the monthly refresh that you can buy or the devil bonuses per week. But basically I've had all this Diamantium I've been sitting on for a while. The reason I have this much Diamantium is because I actually purchased this Diamantium specifically because I wanted Champion's Testaments. So back in June and July when I started to decide I want to make some purchases, in each of those months I bought three of the Adventurer monthly packs because that's how many Champion's Testaments I needed to finish my backlog of 5 star Adventurers. So I was not burning through this Diamantium at a reasonable pace had way more than I needed for daily deals. And so I decided I'm gonna give myself a little bit of rope here to maybe make a bad decision with. 
and go ahead and try do some tenfolds here and see how it goes. As you can see, I was able to get a Jean de Arc, which actually brought me up to Max Unbound when you combine that with the John I'd gotten earlier in the week on the Dragon Special as a daily deal. So that was pretty good. But then I got this Navi dupe and things were not really looking great as far as my summoning here went. For whatever reason, I decided to keep pulling. I was recording, but not recording audio. And I kind of got rewarded for making bad decisions. So I'll let you watch as this plays out. I think this kind of speaks to a larger issue or concern with gotchas, which is that FOMO kind of mentality, fear of missing out where one of the reasons why I decided to do this was, you know, Valentine's Hildegard was the only unit I was missing from that showcase. And I wanted to quote unquote finish the showcase so that I wouldn't have to come back to it in the future if it were rerun again. And so that for at least Valentine's, for Dragon Yule, I could say I had everything on it. I was completely done with it, especially as it seems Dragalia is moving away from these limited banners lately. So that's kind of why I went in here. After this summoning session, you'll see how it ends, but I am still missing some limited units, suffice to say. There I got another Takami Kazuchi, which brings the one I had earlier from yesterday's summoning up to one unbound. And then in this circle, I got another dragon, but one that was actually pretty cool, Freya. Freya is actually quite nice on Noelle because with Freya, Noelle can use her first skill, her big buff skill, in exactly two wand combos, which is great for AI control, player control, because it's not too sophisticated, the AI can't execute it well, and you can go all in on a build with Noelle that's just all about buffing the team. She doesn't necessarily have to run a damage dealing dragon to be a big contributor to your team. So I'm kind of glad I picked up a Freya there and I'm hoping I might be able to pick up a Noelle in free summons and daily deals for the rest of the showcase. That remains to be seen, but finally here I hit a point where I didn't want to go any lower on Diamantium because I wanted to save enough for at least two tenfolds in case there's some Platinums or Dream Summons coming up with the Anniversary. Although I anticipate I might get some more Diamantium during the Anniversary, just because there might be some limited really good packs that you have to buy. But in any case, I did this final circle, and at the very end, there it was, a staff, so I got really hyped. I knew this had to be Valentine's Hildegard, and I also knew this was kind of my last chance to summon I already had Heinwald, I already had regular Hildegard, and just yesterday I got my Summer Verica. So at this point I was holding my breath, and thankfully, by some miracle, we got out of the summoning with only doing one tenfold using Wormite and the rest using Diamantium. This was a really bad summoning session in terms of decision making, but the payoffs and the 5 star dragons we got, the hills guard we got, were actually really awesome. So hopefully this isn't too salt inducing to share. I look back on this and kind of scratch my head at what I was thinking late last night, but you know, it worked out for us. So somewhere there's still a collector mentality in my brain and wanting to get these characters and so I'm just fortunate enough that I didn't have to spend a couple thousand dollars to pull this Valentine's Hildegard as I know some people have. Thankfully that's all the summoning I really did this week besides getting my Jean d'Arc from Daily Deals and my Valentine's Ezolith from Daily Deals as well. And that's pretty much going to do it for this Dragalia Weekly. So I know this is a shorter episode but Maybe we'll have more to discuss next week, especially if we get a What's Ahead for Dragalia Lost, or maybe even a Dragalia Digest. I hope we get some news soon about the anniversary. I've already pre-ordered my art book, and I went ahead and pre-ordered the Daoko Dragalia Lost collaboration first edition as well, so I can check out whatever bonuses come with that. It is a really cool opportunity to get some cool merch for the game. That's the way I see it, and so that's why I decided to do that. In any case, thank you so much for watching, everyone. 
Have yourself a great week. Take care and I'll see you next time.